Hey, welcome back to another OTD video. Today I take you on a little trip, a trip I call Tampo Heaven. Yes, we are looking at a well, probably one of the most heavily tampoed vehicles in Hot Wheels history. That is the Hot Wheels Fandango. A little bit about the Fandango uh, originated in, uh, made it, well, I guess it made its debut in 2001, uh, designed by Phil Reelman. And many, though, though Hot Wheels will never officially say, uh, it does carry a lot of characteristics of the Dodge Durango of that time. So uh, if you look at the front grille, uh, you can see, you know, very, very reminiscent of, uh, you know, Dodge, Dodge styling at that time, you know, and then this, this, what kind of makes this different from the Durango is that this vehicle is slammed and it does, it does, uh, you know, kind of have that, it has, it has that paneled look to it. So, uh, hence why this vehicle has been heavily tampoed over the years. You are looking at a, uh, you know, a pretty good size collection here. Uh, I will not say com is complete because I do have a few other things for you that I will show you in just a bit. But before I get started, I wanted to kind of bring in um, the one instance of the Fandango that is not tampoed. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is a custom made car. It is this one here. This is the original first edition where I removed all the tampos. Uh, I kind of saw through those original tampos. Let's bring out the original first edition here, 2001 first edition. You have Fandango, boom, right on the side of the car, both sides. It's kind of funny when you have a car with the uh, its name on the side. You kind of it's kind of like a movie where they have to announce the name of the movie within the movie. So I don't know, kind of just a is that a double entendre? Um, but so this one is not. This one is not tampoed. You can see a nice pearl paint there, orange pearl. Pretty cool. But um, one of the reasons I really liked this casting, and um, I actually, I mean, I really liked the Dodge Durango at the time too. So uh, just the body lines, those muscular body lines in this in this casting, you really just got uh, some good, some good uh, hard edges on there. So kudos to Phil Reelman for throwing those in there. Um, but yeah, just something that kind of, you know, is overlooked as you're looking at this casting through the years of all those tampos on there is, you know, is that body, that original body that, you know, unfortunately is hidden with all the tampos, but you know, I understand that this being a panel van or a panel truck, you do get, um, you know, you do have that real estate for tampos and basically means it's perfect for the main line. So like I said, the casting came out in 2001. We have that original Fandango show you it again here and uh let me add that you you may have um you know when you when you noticed that opening clip there you may have noticed two cars are missing yes we will we will fill those in so you uh, i will do some uh some opening of some uh very hard to find um, i will even call them go to go, go, go so far as to say that they are rare pieces so and I, I don't use that term those of you that have been following the blog i don't use that term lately so um they have been very hard to track down so I will interject them as we go along here, but another 2001 piece, the AutoZone <clears throat> Fandango. This was a, uh, you know, AutoZone uh, promo car back when they kind of did uh, retailer promo cars with the names on the side. I think Walgreens had some, um, Advanced Auto Parts, uh, a couple other of the uh, the auto vendors there. But this is the AutoZone Fandango. Very cool, kind of a almost like a shop truck if you if you go so far as to say then we have uh moving on to 2002 this is the second year now of the fandango uh it appeared in the blue books it's probably one of the most um most recognizable fandangos because it was part of that um those infamous uh three packs known as the blue books it came with kind of like a uh, a guide to the two, 2002 mainline so we have this red fandango that appeared in, I think it was every blue book, um, at least as far as that standard issue was concerned. So this one was probably the most visible of the Fandangos over the course of the, you know, the Fandango in, in general. But, and we're gonna go to our little, we're gonna interject some, some flavor right here. If you look at the interior, you'll notice that it is gray. And those of you that are variation collectors, 
know that there is essentially a unicorn of this casting out there. It is the white interior Fandango. Uh, a couple years ago, I, I was so fortunate to to actually get one from a, another collector while inquiring about actually a different casting. He said, and I was asking about something else, and he said, what else do you collect? And I said, the Fandango. He said, Fandango, that's a goofy casting. Um, I do have one that you may be interested in, and it was this one. Yes, the infamous white interior Fandango. Just one of those, you, you come across it, you have to get it no matter what the price, essentially, because I'm not sure if you're ever going to see again. And I'm glad I did because I did not, I have not ever seen one of these for sale on the open market. So I don't even know what they would go for. Um, probably not, you know, too much. It probably wouldn't break the bank. But, uh, you know, if you get a couple, if there's another one of you uh, Fandango collectors out there. We would have had a, to rumble for this one. So fortunately, I have mine. So that kind of sets my limit. But... Um, I got a special treat. I am actually going to open this. This is a rare variation. Like I said, I don't say that very often. Uh, this is a rare variation and I'm going to open it right here on camera because, well, you know what? It is a special occasion. We are looking at this cl complete collection. So it opens relatively easy, of course. Oh, well, let's hope you see. Pop that open with the peel and win. You, know, you think I won? Probably. Probably not. All right. Wow. So this is cool. This is the first time I've actually put these two together. Let me get the mic back here. This is the first time I actually put these two together. So very cool to see, you know, the difference of the interior piece there, kind of how it makes the car almost appear. Um, you know, it's got a different kind of characteristic about it there. So very cool. I got that out of my collection. I'm, I am putting these all back in the Carney as soon as I'm finished. So, and when I say Carney, I mean Carney case. For those of you that do not know, I did post a picture a couple days ago on Instagram and people were like, where did you get that case from? And I said, it's from Carney Plastics. You, uh, here you go. Here's their information. Free plug for Carney. <clears throat> Great cases though. So, um, and then, okay. So we're, we're already quite a ways in here and we have quite a ways to go through the Fandango collection. So I'm just going to kind of rifle through some of these, these other ones, these other main lines that you probably have seen before. Um, just so you can kind of see what they look like up close, but that's about it. Uh, 2002, we had the Yu-Gi-Oh. So the Yu-Gi-Oh um, was Mattel's, I think, kind of answer to uh, Pokemon craze, right? Um, yeah, I could be totally off on that, but that was that's at least how I perceive it. So 2002 Yu-Gi-Oh series for the main line. And then we had 2002 as well. You kind of had, uh, back when they had the open vamp, they were kind of like the un-series cars. You know, they had, they had no series kind of designation to them. So this is uh, collector number 2002, number 158. So this is kind of just what I call in the open vamp. So just kind of cool. You got like a little lightning bolt design on the side. So yeah, that one's cool. Um, and then we have 2000, I'm kind of cheating. I got a little list here. So I'm kind of just reading off of it. Hopefully you don't mind too much. This is actually a playset car, this Fandango. 2003, it was the detail center playset. So I think it was like a five or $10 playset. Um, and just kind of a, uh, you know, it was one of those, fortunately I've been collecting this, this casting since 2001 because I, because I liked it right off the bat. So I was able to get these kind of playset cars without any hassle because I found them right in the store when they were easy to find. You know, some of those playset cars tend to be a little challenging years down the road when you're trying to get those in, you know, they all ended up in the, uh, the collection of kids, you know, kids toy boxes. So, uh, what we have, uh, the next jumping to 2000. Oh, that was 2003. Okay. So 2003 was that, that playset car. The main line had a Fandango in um, that as well. 2003 was the Sega, the Sega game series. So this is Space Channel 5. I do not recall this game. I think it was a little older of a game, but had a little deco there. So I, I couldn't even tell you what these, uh, if this is like cover art or I assume so. This, if it was an older game and you know, have to remember that graphics weren't too good back then. Not like they are today. Um, and then we have a kind of, our, I think this is our first, well, I guess aside from the blue book variation, um, this is kind of our first variation of the casting, you know, of a release here. Um, we have the tag ride series, right? Yeah. The tag ride series of 2004. We have, excuse me while I cough here, <coughs> battling a little cold there, but we have, uh, this kind of, uh, you can kind of see the, the, the details, um, are, this, there's the one on, on the ground there is kind of a, it's got a more of a yellow tampo to it. 
And as far as I know, the story goes, uh, this one was the one released first. I think they're both kind of released in equal quantities. So there's not really like a, like a really hard to find uh, variation on this. So they're both kind of just as easy. And, you know, it is a Fandango, so they probably, you know, I think I'm probably the only person that collects it out there. Um, if you if you collect it, let me know. I would I'd be happy to know if you somebody else, if there's another Fandango collector out there. But you can see this is kind of like the first uh, release of it. And as I've been told, uh, either it was the designer or the design manager, uh, when they received the first samples of this and uh, there, you know, the green kind of fades into the, the, the green of the body. So the tampo green fades into the green of the body. So, uh, the, the tampos were kind of changed to this yellow color to, um, and there, and there was some yellow in that first one. And if you look, they kind of reversed essentially, and they put, they injected the, the more of this brighter yellow into there just to kind of make it stand out and actually appear, you know, like it was graffiti. So that's what I've been told. And I believe it to be true. Then getting on to 2004, we had, um, we had a little challenge. It was a, it was called the, the plant, the plant, uh, design challenge, the plant, um, I, I guess for, for lack of a better term, plant design challenge. And it, what happened was that the three plants in, uh, Malaysia and Thailand and I believe it was China. They all did these 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 twenty packs, and it was kind of like a, a battle for packaging supremacy, right? You had uh, you know these these different twenty packs all kind of one kind of opened up. One was kind of um, like the current twenty packs you see in the stores, and the other one was uh, I'm drawing a blank, but you get the point. I mean, they all had these these um, different styles and and. You know, they, they actually sold them on HotWheelCollectors.com and they asked us to, I can't remember the, if they asked us to vote on them or if they uh, they judged them by the sales of the 20 packs. But in the, what is this? This is Malaysia. So in the Malaysia 20 pack, it was an opening 20 pack, um, 10 cars on each side. And it kind of opened like a book and there were two exclu exclusive cars packed with 18 other cars. And one of them was the Fandango. The other one was the Dairy Delivery. So they have, uh, they both have exclusive uh, decos for that 20 pack. Whereas I think one of the 20 packs was just basically um, all, uh, you know, basic cars. And then the other one was known as the Mutant Biotronic Kingdom. I believe that was that's quite a mouthful. Um, and it was all, all 20 cars were exclusive. So obviously that one was the one that sold well. Um, as did this one, cause the dairy was very popular at the time. So the dairy, you know, sold out quite a few, um, 20, 20 packs as, uh, as you can imagine. So, uh, I don't, I don't know if they got exactly what they were looking for in terms of, um, sales based on, you know, popularity of the five pack or of the 20 pack. So, but they, uh, you know, we got, we, you know, we, we, uh, we got some, some pretty cool exclusive cars, at least 22 exclusive cars out of the whole, you know, whole ordeal. So but this one is the one I was most interested in, the Fandango. So one you don't see too often, I don't think. I think a lot of people actually kept theirs packaged. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen them lose too, I guess. So they, and they don't really go for that much. A couple, couple bucks. That's it. Life of a of a fantasy car collector is uh, pretty nice sometimes. You don't have to, uh, you know, pay pay through the nose on uh, some of these. So um, then we kind of go on a run. And it's a run of um, five pack Fandango. So it was kind of like the, the Fandango was relegated to Hot Wheels five packs. And that starts in 2006 with the one of the coolest five packs, actually, in terms of graphics are concerned, is the Sci Fi Highway five pack. And this one, this one is one of my favorite decals, actually, of all time. It's the, uh, the At At Adam Scott's At Atomoscots. So kind of a take on that 50s family kind of a radioactive you know distant dystopia so same kind of graphics on both sides there very cool i love the uh, metallic paint on there nice touch so that was actually a, we had a lot of four three, well, three three releases of the fandango in green there then another five pack we have the i think it was just like a hot wheel city right hot wheels uh city yeah, Hot Wheels City 5-pack 
in 2007. So we had the uh, the roadkill removal, which is kind of a cool, uh, kind of a cool, uh, you know, I guess uh, liv- li- uh, livery, um, you know, in terms of uh, you know some of these city cars we get. So city of Hot Wheels roadkill removal. Not sure if we ever saw a roadkill removal truck before, but we do have one, and there it is. Then uh, three years later. Uh, so it kind of went absent in 2008, 2009, 2010, uh, we saw it in the attack pack five pack and it had this really cool kind of like, uh, you know, this battle worn, uh, deco here. I wonder if that's the same family as the, uh, last one there, but, uh, yeah, this is kind of like a post-apocalyptic Fandango, if you may, it's got the bolted on door at the temples. It's actually a pretty cool temple, right? I mean, um, yeah, I'm not sure if we'd ever see something like that again. It's pretty uh, pretty heavy on there, but very cool. So after the the five packs, we kind of go on a run of uh, color shifters, I guess you could say. And that started in 2011 with this one. This is actually, if you recognize, if you can look close, you see kind of like a graffiti graphics on the side. And if you put it next to that Tag Ride series, let's see if I can do this one-handed here. Nope. You can see that they are the same tempo. So, not the first time Hot Wheels has recycled a, a graphics, a graphics pattern or whatever. So, that was pretty cool. Um, so you can put those together if you must. Um, the cool thing with the color shifters, obviously, you know, with heat, warm them up here. Um, with heat, you can warm these things up and they change colors. You see, it's getting lighter. So this one starts off as kind of like a dark orange. And then as you, you warm it up, it turns to almost like a, like a white, a creamy white. So you got that there. You can see the, the little tampos come out more there. So that's probably as, about as close as to a stock version as you get here before, before it's warmed up. As a lot of these have, uh, you know, like I said in, in, in earlier in the video here, that a lot of them are very heavily tampoed. So... Moving on from that, uh, we actually have the, where are we here? We are in 20, 2011 was the color shifters. So that was the beginning of the year. And later in the year, we have the, uh, another color shifters release. And th- it was this one here. And it turned, if I remember correctly, it turns to the dark blue. Warm it up here. And it, and it should almost appear to be like an X racer. It's not working too well on camera here, but as you as you heat it up, it actually becomes like a blue clear. You can kind of see it in the back there, the base. So, and then after that was 2013. So in 2013, we get another five pack release. It is the oh, I skipped over one. Okay, okay. This is the second of the two um, kind of surprises I had. It was the the like I said there was the the unicorn piece Fandango, which I call I term the uh, unicorn piece because it is a white interior and it is uh, at least for me it was a next to impossible to find. So without a stroke of luck, I wouldn't have had one. But this is another one that required quite a bit of luck to get. It was the boom. It is the Max Steel Urban Storm, or if you. Found in its home market, it was probably called Tormenta Urbana or Tempestade Urbana. And this thing, this thing, if you look at the, the package, is pretty rattled, right? I, I had to enlist some help of several collectors across the globe here, or at least in, in the Americas here. This thing was like a, I'm pretty sure it was a South American exclusive. And that is where I found this one. I found this on a sales site in, in some, um, somewhere in South America. I, I forgot exactly what country it was, but... I had to have, uh, in the sales site, you know, they can't, sometimes you just can't buy, you know, and have things shipped directly to the United States. And as far north as they would send it was Mexico. So I had to find a collector in Mexico to get this one, um, to buy this one off the sales site for me. And then, um, I had to have that collector in Mexico to send to my friend, Tim in Houston, uh, for some, you know, some other challenges there. And then, you know, Tim sent it to me in Phoenix, but along the way, I think there's four, you know, Obviously, um, you know, 
I, I had to buy it because it was the last one I needed and it was well worth what I spent on it to get it, which actually wasn't bad considering the initial sales price was, I think like, like a couple bucks. So, but this thing, this thing took me a long time to find and I'm going to take it out of here. Let me take it out. There we go. There we go. Slides right out because all well, the package is mangled. So, but that is all right. Cause this thing is joining the Fandango collection. If you look, it's kind of like an x-ray. So the, the, body's translucent green so just one of those cool cars you you know you don't ever see i'm not even sure if there's pictures of this thing up on the wiki or hobby db or any of those other databases so i need to i need to get on adding this i've actually had it for a couple couple months now almost a year i think so um but as cool as that one is as cool as i'd like to drool all, all over that one for a little bit longer um i'm gonna move along here and i'm gonna show you another one this is another five pack uh, 2013, I believe it was. Yeah, the Automotion Speedway 5-pack. So, just kind of a, you know, basic Hot Wheels deco. Pretty cool with the, the checkered flag pattern in there. And then we had another Color Shifters release. Uh, it was 2014. And this thing, this thing has been released several times over. The Ocean Patrol, you'll actually notice in 2019 here, uh, five years after this initial release, we're still seeing it released in the Color Shifters line. So it's been released several times. It was in a, a couple play sets, I know, uh, Color Shifter themed play sets. So I only I only picked up this one. As far as I can tell, there is no difference between this one and the one that's released in 2019. So I only picked up, I only have one. No need to kind of pick up the different releases if they're exactly the same. So, and then... So if you notice, the Fandango kind of goes on these runs, these runs of, of, of where it gets like, I guess, typecast for lack of a better term too. So, it got, you know, it was it was typecast to the main line for a little bit there. And then it was, you know, a, a multi-pack car, a color shifters. Now it's kind of been typecast into this, uh, this, this uh, premium basic, or I guess you call it a retail basic, um, oh, theme assortment, that's it, theme assortment line. So you have various themed assortments, you know, you recognize these, you know, they're kind of the basic level cars. And the first one was the 2016 Spider-Man Sinister Six series. I think this was a Kroger exclusive and it had Electro on the sides. So very cool. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's that one. I love the paint on this one. Metal Flake Black. Very cool. And... Uh, before we get to the next few, uh, we did have it reappear in the main line. And the main line, uh, if, 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 I guess if, if, when I say fans of the cla the casting, I guess I'm, I kind of am referring to myself. I'm not sure if there are any other fans of the casting, but you know, me being the nerd I am, uh, loved the casting change. So this made a third version of the casting available. Uh, the original was plastic based metal body. Then the color shifters and five packs um, later on were plastic bodied and metal base. Excuse me, my cough again. <coughs> Battle some allergies here. So, and then the third version of the casting was metal body, plastic base, but the fenders have now been molded as part of the interior. So, what makes it cool is that it gives it a color break, which is you know, pretty cool in itself. Um, you know, it just adds more color. You know, the, the casting's already tampered to heck. And, you know, the color break is actually a welcome change because it kind of gives it, you know, some definition. Some definition that's kind of, you know, lost some of those other those other versions of it. So this is actually the regular treasure hunt from the Hot Wheels art cars in, what was that, 2017. So you had the big treasure hunt logo and then you had the, re the uh, you know, the later wave release where it was just kind of a regular release same tamples with the exclusion of the uh, the circle flame logo is now a hot wheels logo so this one kind of reminds me of a uh, saved by the bell i think that was kind of the look they're going for so then we have uh another of those themed assortments it was the winter 2017 mix and you know just a gray car of gold wheels you know, a little funky, but you know, it is what it is. It is the Fandango. Anything goes, right? So then we, uh, last year we saw the car as, uh, a chess piece 
in the Checkmate series, that, which was pretty popular with collectors. I think a lot of people ended up collecting that segment. And it was the Rook. And he had it in black and white with yellow fenders, which is, like I said, I like. I really like this the color break on the new casting. Here's the uh, white piece. Let's get them together. So, both sides of the board represented there. And then the last two releases of the Fandango are both of that theme, theme of the assortment variety. Uh, we have the Star Wars, I think I called it the Star Wars Original Characters series in 2018, so that was last year. You had Chewbacca. <laughs> and, yeah, if you've been paying, paying attention for the last 25 minutes, I just did a Chewbacca voice. And you had Chewbacca on the side, so... You know, couldn't have, I kind of like. I really like when they do this casting in a metal flake. It just it shines well. Very smooth casting. And then the panel area. Excuse me, I cough again. <coughs> okay, I gotta get, wrap this up before I die of my cough here. So the last release was the goofy casting. <laughs> the goofy casting. It is a goofy casting, but I love it. Uh, the last release is the, is this this last year. I just found it um, on Friday. It was the this 2019 Mickey and Friends. So I think I, I probably still have the cardboard. No, I put I trashed it already. But it was like if you put all eight cards together, it formed kind of a, a mural of Mickey and his friends. So the Fandango got goofy. So you know, not everybody's cup of tea. I know that, but actually, not even probably a lot of people's cup of tea, but. If you have watched this video this long, I thank you because that makes you a true fanatic. <laughs> so, but this is this is the complete collection. Um, you know, sans uh, the base, any kind of base variations. There's you know there's a couple that I could add to this, but this is these are all the Fandangos since 2001. So we have 18 years of Fandangos right in front of you there. So I'll leave you with that. I thank you for watching. If you're still there, I thank you for watching. And uh, look for more great OTD content coming your way.